Hi, I'm Sabin Yaakov. This presentation is entitled, Why the Ferrite in an Air-Gapped Core? This uh, presentation was inspired by a comment to a video that I've uh, posted in my uh, YouTube channel. This is the link to the video. It will also be put at the page of this video. And uh, the name of this uh, video was The Gap in Inductor's Core, a different or oh, interesting perspective. And the comment was by Professor Chuck. Now he wrote, minor air gaps of one millimeter or less effectively kill the inductance by a factor of 100 to 1000 to the point that the ferrite cores used are completely wasted as they contribute only core losses and large extra weight. In fact, the ferrite core is only there to define the length of the air gap and with that the ultra-low inductance. So what Professor Chuck is saying that really the ferrite is not contributing anything uh, to the core. So the objective of this presentation is, is really to refute uh, this point of view. Now let me start with point one, and that is the objective in inductor design. Now the objective in the design is to build an inductor that the inductance is already given. I mean, it's a given inductance that we have to design for. And then we are given the peak current, the RMS current, this is, has to do with the topology, and we like it to be of minimum size and that it will not saturate, and we'll have a predetermined loss, that is we are setting up the level of the loss, the core losses that we would like to have, and we then have to come up with the design of this inductor. This is the objective. Now let me start with the size. Now it can be shown very easily that the optimum size in terms of A W over A sub W over A sub E, that is the area product, winding window area times cross section area of the core is equal to this expression. And this will ensure that we are filling up the window winding window, maximum, and that will be for a given B max or delta B. This is given in some of my uh, YouTube video, you can look it up. And for a given RMS, uh, current RMS, P current, J is the current density of the wires that we are using, and K is the filling factor. So this will be the optimum uh, size uh, that we can get for these parameters. And again, it can be uh, expressed as a function of a B of for the losses. The B maximum is either saturation or dependent on the loss. Let's go now to point three. What is the permeability of a core like this with a gap? We can do it different ways and I'm going to do it from the energy point of view. Energy density is B over H and this is the volume. So B times HF, this is the magnetic field within the ferrite, times the volume of the ferrite. B times magnetic field within the gap, H sub G, times the volume of the gap and this I can equate it to the B times H when H is the N times I over the length. This is the actual uh, equivalent H of the core. That's not at any given point, but rather representing the coil as a whole, the inductor as a whole. And therefore, by expressing H as B over mu, I get this expression. While I have 
crossed out a b and finally i'm getting this that is the length here the length of the ferrite over the mu of the ferrite the length of the gap over the mu of the gap is the total length times this equivalent mu this equivalent mu is sort of representing the uh, core as a whole and from that i can find that uh, mu sub a that is the equivalent mu or permeability or relative permeability of the core is the total length divided by this this is now the length of the ferrite over mu sub r and which is the relative permeability of the ferrite uh, plus the length of the core of the gap now permeability of ferrite is very high it's in the order of uh, uh, 3000 4000 so that this uh, could be a small as compared to this and in this case we we get that the permeability or the relative permeability for the whole structure is the length of the uh, ferrite this is well known the only difference is that i've done here starting with energy balance rather than from another point of view so this will be the equivalent permeability for the whole core now of course if there is no ferrite it's just air then obviously mu sub r is, is one and we get that uh, permeability here is uh, one because uh, we're going back to an uh, air core so we can then look at the inductance and how does it depend on the dimension number of turns etc and the inductance is equal to n square area over the total length times mu e i'm just looking at the core as a whole times u zero this is the total uh, permeability now obviously the for a given l and if mu sub e is going down is decreasing that is mu is becoming smaller and in the end say if it's an air core then it's one then instead of mu sub e which could be a number like 20 50 100 120 depending on the application uh, you will have to compensate for it either by n square that is more turns or by ae there's no other way that is if you need a certain inductance the smaller mu sub e the larger will be the core that is because you need a more more turns or another a larger area which means that mu sub e is helping to reduce air okay the larger the permeability the smaller the, the l because if mu sub e is large then you can reduce the number of turns now if the permeability is air approaching one then obviously you are going to have a larger core now as a side of observation let's have a look what is the value of or the required value i should say of the uh, overall permeability or relative permeability mu sub e now for large mu sub r that is with the ferrite the this expression is the energy stored within the core this is b squared or the equivalent permeability times the volume the total volume of the core and this should be equal to li square over 2 so this is the energy stored in the core now obviously then if i take out mu sub b here i see that this permeability or the required relative permeability of the core is inversely proportional to the energy stored this is well known uh, you'll find it in data sheets of uh, manufacturers of uh, cores that will show you that the larger the energy required to be stored in the core the smaller will be the permeability that you need now what about air cores 
Well, there are many shapes of air cores, and here is uh, one example. It's given from uh, uh, this particular uh, website. It's from a Surrey uh, University, and um, what we see here is an, an expression for the inductance you'll get for a core, and these are the dimensions here. As it turns out, there is an optimum dimension, which is this ratio here. Um, and uh, this is the inductance for in the general case, and this is the inductance for this particular situation, which is, uh, according to a uh, investigator by the name of Brooks, uh, supposed to be the optimum uh, size of an air core of this shape. So, it is possible to, of course, uh, build an air core, but they'll always be larger than a core built around the ferrite. So, what is the purpose of the ferrite in an air-gapped core? Well, the ferrite helps to minimize the size of the core for the required end, no matter how you look at it. Now, air cores do have an advantage. The advantage is that they don't suffer from core losses, magnetic core losses, and of course they don't have a saturation limit. So in some cases, um, especially if you need to develop a very high uh, current or a, a pulse, then um, air core could be the way to go. But for general, um, switch mode converter when you need a moderate size um, uh, inductance and uh, current capabilities, uh, then of course the ferrite-based uh, core is the optimum way to go. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it interesting and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.